What's going on beautiful people? Today we're going to use Chris Titus Tech's Windows Utility or WinUtil PowerShell script to debloat this installation of Windows 11. This is my personal rig. I use it and have all kinds of software installed that I use and it's been installed a couple of years. What I did prior to starting recording and opening Chrome was I rebooted the system, I logged in, and let it sit there with the task manager open for five minutes, and then I took a screenshot to give you a before of the usages prior to running this debloat script. Now we're going to go run the debloat script, and I will um, do the same thing, restart the machine, log in, open task manager, and let it run five minutes, and do another screenshot for the after. So this is pretty easy. We just type in Chris Titus Tech Windows Utility into Google and you click right here on GitHub. Now if I would have just scrolled down a little bit more from the other day I would have discovered you don't even have to download the script. You just have to open a PowerShell script in administrative mode so I'm going to hit my little Windows key or click the Windows button and type PowerShell. Make sure you've got it selected and click on Run as Administrator and give it access rights. Okay, and you'll know you've done it right when you say Administrator colon PowerShell. Now I'm just going to copy this command because we want the stable branch. So we hit this little thing here to copy that web address. Go back to PowerShell, right click, which pastes, and this runs a couple commands that will download the script and then run it. So we don't even have to do anything with the set execution policy or anything like that. This don't take long. It'll pop up. In my previous video, we went over to MicroWin and made an ISO that was already pre-stripped down. Um, so on this install tab, I'll just show you how this works. Um, let's turn off compact view and this shows you all the things that you can install or uninstall using uh, Windows Utility and it's using the WinGet package manager which is built into Windows 11 anyway. So if you've already got something installed and you want to get rid of it, most of the time you can come here and find it. For example, uh, Microsoft Teams, let's see, that would be under, uh, yeah, I'll just search for Teams up here in the top, and I've got Teams installed, and I don't want it. I'm going to click on it and say, uh, uninstall selected. And it's going to tell us, uninstalling Microsoft Teams. You can see what it's doing back here. It's basically running WinGet to get rid of it. So that's the manual way you can clean some stuff up if you know you have things that you don't want. Let's head on over to tweaks and I'll show you the tweaks that I would do. And there are recommended selections for standard and minimal here, but um, I'm going to choose to pick my own. I'm going to create a restore point for sure and that way all the registry changes we can just roll it back with a, a restore if somehow these options we end up not liking what they do. Um, I'm going to disable consumer features, and this is the junk where it installs a bunch of apps without you wanting it to. I'm going to disable telemetry, and that's where it's phoning home to Microsoft to let Microsoft know what apps you're opening, how long you stayed on them, and all that craziness. I'm going to disable um, activity history. That's something that I just don't use. It's uh, There's a little button for it down here somewhere, and maybe I've got that turned off already. I don't need game DVR because I am not recording my gaming footage, what little games I play these days. I'm going to leave hibernation on. That's kind of handy at times, but you may want to get rid of it. Um, I want to leave home group on because I do use the home group features. I'm going to disable the location tracking. I'm going to leave storage sense on. I don't think that's going to hurt anything. I'm going to leave Wi-Fi sense on because that'll give me some pop-ups to let me know when my connection's go not going so well and that sort of thing. This is pretty cool. Enable end task with right click. So if you really want to kill a process, you can right click on one of your 
um, programs that's open on your taskbar, and there's an in task that's a little bit more powerful than close window. I'm not going to do a disk cleanup right now because I do that manually from time to time. I'm going to change my default PowerShell to PowerShell 7. Why not? I'm going to turn off the telemetry for that. And you may or may not have recall, depending on what version of Windows 11 you're running, but it is a very controversial feature that takes screenshots of everything you do and then can use AI to roll back what you did or, I don't know, provide you with some steps of what you did. But I don't like the fact that it's taking screenshots and you have no idea what it's going to capture, if it's like a credit card number or whatever. So I'm going to turn that off. Set hibernation as default. I'm not on a laptop, not going to do that. Set services to manual. This one's nice because if you don't know, if you set a service to manual um, and Windows ends up needing that service, it'll just go ahead and start it. So this keeps a lot of auto started services for stuff that you don't do on a daily basis um, at bay. Okay. And then we're going to debloat edge. Now these advanced tweaks, um, I'm going to block the Adobe network and um, going to leave Adobe Debloat alone because I use a lot of their stuff. I'm not sure what that does, but I do know they have a Node.js uh, instance that just pings constantly back to Adobe. So I'm going to turn that off and uh, I'm going to disable Teradu, which is some kind of a transition wrapper so that um, IPv4 requests can get wrapped into IPv6 or maybe the other way around. It's something that does not affect most things, but supposedly it is a um, security attack vector um, for some things. And so I'm just going to turn it off. I'm going to turn off the background apps. I don't need those. I'm going to leave my full screen optimizations as they are. I want to disable Copilot. I have no interest in using Copilot. Um, let's see. I don't want to disable the notification tray or calendar. Let's disable the Windows platform binary table. This allows the computer vendor to in inject stuff. So if Gigabyte were to get hacked, for example, they may be able to push stuff uh, when it boots into Windows without your consent. I'm going to leave my display performance alone. Um, I'm going to leave my right click menu to the Windows 11 style because I have to be used to that because I support so many other users. I recommend if you're not supporting other people and don't care about the Windows 11 way of doing stuff to turn this one on because the right click menu as it is in Windows 11 is a mess and takes away a lot of features that I use all the time. I don't want to set my time on the BIOS to UTC. I am not going to remove all Microsoft Store apps. Um, I can remove them one by one as needed. I don't want to remove Edge. I actually use Home and Gallery somewhat in Windows Explorer. I use OneDrive and I don't have any Razor software. This OO Shut Up 10 has all kinds of options. I'm not going to go into that because a lot of that is stuff I don't care about all that much. And then we have customized preferences. You don't even have to hit run tweaks to do these, but I don't want dark theme. I don't want Bing search in my start menu because that really slows the start menu down. I just want it to search for stuff on my computer. I do want verbose messages during login and I want numlock on startup. Um, I'm going to leave the recommendations on. I use snap window. I use snap assist and snap assist suggestions. I'm going to leave on mouse acceleration. I'm going to turn off sticky keys if it was on. I've already done that before I even had this. Um, I already show hidden files and extensions. Uh, I don't want the search button in the taskbar. I don't use it because I just hit the Windows key and then there it is. I don't use the task view button. I think I already had that turned off anyway. I do not want the center of my taskbar items, and I already had that turned off as well, but I'll do it here. Um, I don't want the widgets button in the taskbar. That's this thing right here. And I do want the detailed blue screen of death, or BSOD. 
Okay, so now we're just going to run the tweaks. And some of this stuff won't work if you're on Windows 11 Home. You have to have Windows 11 Pro, which I do, because some of it uses group policy and they have those disabled in Windows 11 Home. So just take note, if you try some of it and it don't quite seem to work or disable or remove something, it may be because it only works for uh, Windows 11 Pro. So we'll give it a second to run its scripts. All right, the tweaks are done. I'm just going to flip on over to config just to show you this is kind of cool. You can turn on or turn off um, various features of Windows uh, by installing features or unchecking the box. And this right here is kind of cool. Uh, these fixes, auto login is for the people that just want it to log into a user with no password. There's use cases for that. You can reset Windows Update, which is great when Windows Update breaks. It, ha it doesn't happen as much as it used to, but um, I used to have to do that all the time. You can reset your network if it's acting bad. You can do a system corruption scan, which is actually another function of DISM if you followed my other videos. You can reinstall WinGet if something gets messed up with it. And Adobe Creative Cloud is so aggravating that they've even built in a way to get rid of that easily. Here is how you can get to your old control panels and stuff. A lot of people would find that useful. Okay, and if I go to updates, there is something here that I won't fool with because I just want to get Windows updates all the time. That's why I don't stick with Windows 10 or Windows 7 because I want all the updates as soon as they come out, even though it causes me some problems, I feel like it's going to help me stay safe as I do stuff online and these exploits as they get found. Microsoft patches them. I want them as quick as I can get them. Um, this one here, uh, the security settings turns off uh, feature updates for two years and it's uh, security updates get installed after four days. That uh, security updates installed after four days isn't a horrible thing because sometimes they've rolled out security updates that break something real bad and that way it gives them time to take it down before it, it downloads it. And I would never ever ever do this and I think they don't want you to either to disable all Windows updates. But there are use cases where you need to do that as well. Okay, so now we're going. you can click on over to MicroWin and I did a whole video about that. And that's how you get a fresh, clean installation of Windows um, from an ISO that you create here. And you don't have to do these tweaks because most of it's been done. All right, so I've done the tweaks. Okay, I'm going to close this and stop my recording. I'm going to reboot the system and let it run for five minutes and then take a snip and show you the difference in usage of the processor and the RAM and the storage devices before and after. Now let's do the before and after. So before I ran WinUtil, this is what we had. This is a screenshot of the task manager and the taskbar. The CPU usage wasn't horrible, but you could see that it was definitely up a little bit. Um, we used 11 gigabytes of RAM, and Windows does like to stretch its legs if you have a lot of RAM. And I know 128 gigabytes is pretty ridiculous, but uh, anyway, it used 11 gigs. And the SSD really wasn't getting hit that much. The Wi-Fi wasn't getting hit that much. But there you go. 259 processes, 5,220 threads. Okay, and you can see I let it run five minutes. So let's go to the after. And there's the after screenshot. We've cut down on the number of processes by about 60. And the number of threads is way down and the handles, of course, as well. And this is after letting the after when you till system run for five minutes as well. We cut down on memory usage by a whole gigabyte. And you could see that processor usage was super low. There's almost no spikes whatsoever 
Honestly, it wasn't a huge change in the amount of processor usage, but definitely the number of processes and threads and uh, that sort of thing. Okay, and just for comparison's sake, let me get out of full screen here. I'm going to pull up both at the same time. So after is on the right, before is on the left. And let's zoom in. Because what really tells the tale is the number of processes and handles. There we go. So you can see we've cut down on quite a few uh, processes and handles. So we have increased the efficiency of the system. We cut down on the amount of RAM used too, so that's always good. So I would say that Windows Utility delivers as promised. It's not a magic bullet, it just literally shuts off a lot of stuff that you don't want and don't care about. So if I hit my little Windows key and type in restore, and we go to create restore point, you can go into system restore, and I'm going to say choose a different restore point, and there's the one created by WinUtil. Okay, so if you want to go back before you did WinUtil, this is probably your best bet to make sure every single thing that got changed gets flipped back. And it's mostly just registry edits and some group policy stuff, which is also a registry edit in a sense. So there you have it. That's how you can optimize and de-bloat an existing Windows 11 installation with a fantastic free tool from Chris Titus Tech. And I highly recommend it for anybody. I appreciate you all watching. I hope it helped. Give me a like and subscribe if you think what I'm doing is worthwhile. Let me know where you're from in the comments because it's so interesting. I've had people from all over the world respond so far from my other videos. You guys have a great day and I'll catch you in the next one.